Good evening, everyone. How are we all? Great. Well, welcome to Have a Seat. I'm your host, Curtis Inton. We have so much in store for you this week. Joining me today is singer Minnie Birch, boxer Michael Devine and actor Jack Vinstead. Excited? Well, so am I. Would you believe we're all celebrities are here? Mum, you may have to take a seat. See what I did there because I've made it. So you're all sitting there probably wondering what on earth I'm going on about. Well, Have a Seat is a talk show where we have a chat with our guests, find out the secrets, play a little game to decide whether they're going for a seat in heaven or in hell. Before we dive into all the fun of the games of the show, there is a more serious matter we have to tackle. As most of the country knows, our great Prime Minister decided to call a snap election after saying there wasn't going to be another election. I know, I know, another lying politician. Would you believe it? I don't know about the rest of you, but I would trust a blind man leading me across a tightrope more than I trust any MP right now. So I sent my friend Amina into London to speak to the public and gather their thoughts. Hello, I'm Amina and we're here live in Covent Garden to ask the public their views on the snap election. So what do you think about Theresa May calling a snap election after denying she wasn't going to do it? It was the right, pro it was the right decision on yeah. her part. Why is that? Why? Yeah. Because she always swipe while the iron's up. <laughs> and got, she's up against nobody, he's mm. a useless kid. So what are your thoughts about Theresa May and the leader of Labour not going to go to the TV debates? Do you think they're afraid of it or...? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of truth will come to uh, front and they'd be confronted with a lot of things that they can't really... Answer. Yeah, yeah, and dodge. They try and dodge stuff, so, yeah. They call, keep going back to their words, don't they? Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Like, they'll, they'll say one thing and then they never follow through on it. So how do you trust yeah. any of them? I hate every politician. I put my against a warm shoot if I had a chance. <laughs> but, yeah, totally untrustworthy. So there we have it. We've heard the views on the public. So what do you think? Let us know in the studio. Well, there you go. A little insight to what the people of London think about the snap election. Right, so let's get back to business. Please welcome guest number one, singer-songwriter Minnie Birch. Good evening, Minnie. Good evening. How, how are you this evening? I'm good, thank you. I'm losing my voice. You are losing your voice. Yeah, we must say, guys, <laughs> if you're at home and um, you're in the studio, um, Minnie is losing her voice. So if you can't hear her, we do apologise. She has got a mic, so you guys will be able to hear. <laughs> um, so for the people who don't know who you are, you are a singer-songwriter from Hertfordshire. Um, if we just start straight in, how, how did you get into singer-songwriting? Ah, I've just always sung and played guitar since I was really little. Um, my granddad is a George Formby impersonator, so he gave me a ukulele when I was born, and then I've just been making music ever just since. Just then from there. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who would you say your inspiration is? Obviously, your granddad obviously may have taken part in your musical journey, but um, like in the big open world. <laughs> uh, yeah, my granddad massively, but hopefully I don't sound like George Hornby, <laughs> that which I might do today. Um, like, I'm a big fan of, like, I guess, uh, kind of UK and folk music. So, like, The Staves, Laura Marling, I'm a big fan of her, Kelly Oliver, so kind of traditional acoustic singer-songwriters. So you are um, a folk musician, uh, well, around folk <laughs> music. Yeah. Um, why did you choose like, that kind of genre, obviously, growing up? Um, obviously listening to those guys obviously would be an influence uh, an influence into singing like li uh, them uh, but why why them in particular like why, why that kind of genre um i guess that um when i was younger i would play in, in bands and then as we all kind of went to uni got married it got harder to keep a band together so i just played solo and i think once you're just you and an acoustic guitar you quite easily fall into that genre you meet other musicians who make that music you get influenced by by them so, so you mentioned you was in a band before yeah. um did, do you prefer playing in a band do you prefer being solo um i play in a 10 piece folk band as well on okay. the side um so i guess they just have different they just have different things touring with the band is kind of more fun is it the there's a crew of you yeah on you get on your bus go around, is that, is that how it was, or was it a bit slightly different? Or? <laughs> we all get in our separate cars, oh, actually. Separate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we all get to stay together, which is nice. It's more of an adventure when you're with the band. Um, when I'm on my own, I've had more of the, like, getting lost, getting mugged, got mugged when I was on tour in Europe. Christ. <laughs> what, what country um, was that in? I was in Berlin, so, you know, it can happen so anyway. stay out of Berlin, guys, stay out of Berlin. <laughs> I don't, it's yes, a beautiful it's place. <laughs> um, it was a really lucky mugging, actually, because um, I digress off your question here, but um, like minutes before I got mugged, I put everything I had, including all my tour money, so I had like like a thousand euros in cash, into the museum cloakroom, like walked around the corner, and two minutes later got mugged. So it was really lucky. So it was lucky you did put it in. <laughs> <laughs> a lucky Thank mugging. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. Did they get much? 
Uh, they got a 50 euro in my train ticket. I got a hole in my tights. They... <laughs> Damn it, the tights. <laughs> right, okay, so um, let's talk about your music. Uh, you released your first EP in 2013, am I right in saying that? Gosh, yeah. Yeah, so that was four, four years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, how much over the four years has your music either changed or has it developed? Have you developed yourself? Yeah, I think it's got bigger. It used to just be me and my guitar. That first EP is pretty much just me and my guitar, but my last album is like much more produced and there's a lot of instrumentation on it and production on it. So um, talk about that. You won an LCM award, which, which translates to... Uh, it's called the Laurel Canyon Music Award. Okay. Um, it's a nice thing to win. I guess um, before that, I just thought as a singer-songwriter, but those guys are really folky. Um, so when I won the award, that kind of opened me up to their kind of following, that yeah. are more like folky people. Um, but yeah, they gave me a nice uh, hefty chunk of money as part of my award towards putting my album out. So, so was how, nice. how was you nominated? Was you Did someone nominate you? Did they just listen to you online, nominate you, let you know you was nominated? How, how did that work? Um, I was really lucky actually because all the different categories are like nominations and then people vote but then they have one special award that they just give and to someone the, they that like. The one, that's <laughs> yeah. the one you won. So that was nice. I didn't have to like bug anyone to vote for me because that's always a bit awkward. Well I think that deserves a round of applause guys there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about BBC Introducing. You've, uh, you've appeared on there. Um, mm. how, how did that work? Did you get the call? Did you obviously apply for it? And uh, what kind of experience did that get you, give you and uh, what kind of benefits did you had from it? Yeah, it's, I love BBC Introducing, it's great. You just go in to the uploader and upload your track to like your local show and then they're kind of a feed of all the other ones. And it's quite cool because you get little email updates. So they'll email you saying, oh, we got your track. And they're like, oh, your local you know, presenters listen to your track. Gareth Lloyd likes your track. And um, I just got a little email that was like, oh, Hugh Stevens has listened to your track. I was like, awesome. <laughs> and it was like, Hugh Stevens has playlisted your track. And I was like, what, like, on his, on his iPod or on his show? Like, what does that, what does that <laughs> actually mean? <laughs> so it's like a really exciting process. Like, um, it can really help out. So like getting that, like, national radio play made a big difference. Right, OK. Well, let's cut the chitter chatter and get Sorry. to the game. That's all right. Oh. <laughs> we'll watch the demonstration in a moment uh, to see what you'll be doing. But as you know, the amount of answers you guess correctly will decide your fate in heaven or in hell. Heaven, you'll receive a soothing massage. That'd be nice. Not feeling too well. A nice little massage. But in the hell, <laughs> after meeting Sergeant Sutton, you'll be performing a drill of his standard as a punishment. And you'll be sat surrounded by goose, sludge with insects crawling all around. Don't worry, you'll have a nice ice cold drink. How are you feeling about the game? Actual, actual live. Actual live insects. You won't find out. I just don't, don't want to hurt any. What insects. we're going to do, we'll play the VT and um, don't worry, yeah, no animals <coughs> are harming in the making. <laughs> so, uh, what we'll do is we will uh, roll the VT and we'll see what you're doing. Okay? Okay. All you have to do is work out the dance moves the silhouette will be performing. Just shout out when you think you know the answer. Let's play. Right, okay, so you get the gist of the game. There's going to be a silhouette performing some dance, a dance, um, a well known dance, I would say, on the screen. <laughs> and you've just got to try again. Well Guys We're in the audience, <laughs> if she is completely stumped, feel free to give her a hand oh, okay. if you think you know what it is. Okay. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a go. Let's, let's see the first one. So, right, clapping. And this, like where I come from, we just call this the, the clapper jack. Right, okay, let's see if it develops. <laughs> just genuine, just me. Okay, there's a bit more movement. Oh my gosh. What would we think? Um, any, any ideas from the audience? Cha-cha They're going for the cha-cha, they're quite certain on that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I would go with what they're saying. We're going for the cha-cha yeah. slide? <laughs> <laughs> I was just making up Imagine the first if you thing didn't. <laughs> under panic. Right, okay, let's see if that's the correct answer. The person who made that video looked very happy, didn't they? That was good. It's yeah. Not like being forced to. Do you say you didn't know what that song was, or you do know what that song is? No, I didn't know what the dance was called. Oh, oh okay. And then I had a little panic and I misunderstood that I like had to now do that, but I don't. Oh no, no. <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? Getting you on the stage to give it a dance. <laughs> right, okay. As you know, you need to get the second one correct to go into heaven. So Wait, let's what? see. Does there, that there's not count another one. If they guess it. Um, no, no, no. That's fine. That's oh, fine. Okay. But we'll see if we can. You can get it first, though. Okay. okay. We're going to play the second VT and see if you can get it right. All right, again, swelling of the arms. This is like the Saturday night dance, right? The really old, oh, does it have a name? Oh. What do you think, guys? Saturday night, does that sound about right? But it must yeah. have a, like, yeah. Are we going for, yeah? Oh, not, not quite. 
yeah. quite confident up there. Yeah, yeah, but that's... I mean, I'm not very good with ages, but that's, like, quite unfair, because if you're young, you're not going to... That's quite an old thing. <laughs> Any oldies in the crowd? No, I know, I, I know it. I know, I know. I'm just saying We're going for about 60 upwards, tough. 60 upwards. I think my mum's out there somewhere. <laughs> Where are you, mum? <laughs> I just don't know if it has a name, but it's the Saturday night. We're going for Saturday night? Done. Right, OK, let's have a little look. I'll make your mind, you know I'll take it to the top. I'll drive you crazy. Well done. Two out of two. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right, the, the results are in. Where do you think she's going, heaven or hell? I think she's going to heaven. Do you want her to go to heaven? No. I would not. No. <laughs> I would not have got that first one. Billy, you are, of course, you are going off to heaven. Go, go make your way there. The masseuse, <laughs> Molly the masseuse. <laughs> How, what was your first thoughts of heaven? Uh, it's nice, it's comfy. Yeah, here. it's comfy. You got some orange juice there. Has that, that got bits in? Are you fussy? I know, I'm good. I feel yeah. like I've cheated my way into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the devil's standing right next to you, so if he thinks you're in hell, he's going to put you in there. And we're going to let you off with the, um, with the masseuse, going to let you get a little bit more relaxed, okay. a bit pampered. So, OK, now that's over and done with, we will check in and see how many is getting a little bit later. Our next guest is a South East boxing champion, Michael Devine, who you may know as Chunky. Good evening, Michael. How's it going? You're Thank right? you for coming on the show. Not Great a problem, to see you. Not a problem. So before, before we talk about you and your boxing, um, Chunky, <laughs> let's talk about right, the nickname Chunky, where does that come from? Yeah, my, my old dear gave me a nickname when I was about six months old, I was bigger than most kids and it just Chunky stuck, stuck with around. Yeah, it stuck Is it a name me. you like? I mean, if I was facing you, obviously I don't do boxing, but if yeah. I was facing you, I'd be quite scared. I don't, I don't, I don't mind it, it's, it could be worse, could be worse, I get <laughs> called a lot, lot worse, so yeah, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> Okay, so you're, you're 28 years old. You're a yeah. professional boxer. You are yeah. from uh, the Luton area. Yeah. Um, you're a you're the South East uh, Super Featherweight Champion. Yeah. Well, I used to be. I'm lightweight. You're champion. lightweight champion actually. Now, so you moved so up a yeah, yeah. So two weights. Yeah. Fantastic. So, what, how does it feel, obviously, first of all, to win your first your first championship? Well, I won my first title in like 2013 and opened up some some doors. So, I box on Sky Sports and stuff like that. So. Uh, it gave me a platform to get on the big shows. Uh, I fought on the undercard of Anthony Joshua as well at the O2 Arena. So, so this week, obviously, the weekend just gone. Um, yeah, yeah. He, 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 well, obviously, I didn't box yeah, last yeah, he weekend. Like, like, uh, yeah, he's a uh, yeah, it was a, like, a fantastic occasion. So, hopefully, a few more big nights like that. So, obviously, talking about Anthony Joshua um, yourself, you've still you you can still get so much uh, bigger. You can get so much. Uh, more exposure, and is that is that what the aim is to be as big as you see the greats, to be one of the greats? I, I'm I'm realistic. Like, uh, I'm happy. I've set myself goals, and I'm not going to see it. Say I've been a world. I'm going to be a world champion, but um, I'll um, I'll become British champion. Then I'll that's that's, that's my dream. That's my yeah. dream, and then I'll, I'll reevaluate and see if I can go further, and then I'll set myself new goals. So, so um, you um, you recently signed with Steve Goodwin. Yeah. Um, and I've got a quote, obviously, from Steve. It says, uh, Michael is an exciting fighter and will be involved in some big fights. Can you reveal any big fights coming up? I was supposed to be fighting for the Commonwealth title in April, but um, a little complication like, through boxing. It, it happens to yeah. a lot of boxers. I was supposed to fight for the English title, and then because I was down under contract, so I, it ended up I didn't fight for none, <laughs> none of them. So that's how it goes. But um, I will be in big fights by the end of the year. So because you're obviously you're only 20 years old, so you're still obviously relatively young. Um, yeah. I will I will bring this up. Four yeah. four weeks prior to signing the contract, yeah, yeah. Um, you announced your retirement. Yeah, just what, um, what was the reasoning behind that? Just like because of the I was I was supposed to be fighting for the Commonwealth title and it kind was of all fell through. It was just, worth yeah. a, worth a lot of money to me and. When that when that fell through, it broke my heart, and I thought, you know what? I've been boxing since I was ten years old. I'm going to enjoy myself for a bit. But uh, and then you, what what happened? Steve got called no, you up. No, some, someone um, someone's come and uh, is going to back me financially because a lot lot of it um, you might have the the most amount of talent, but you need financially back to train full time. So I've got that now. Now I can really and push do, on. Do you train full time? Yeah. So what what is a, a basic week for you? Obviously, but you're not getting an easy bun in. Like, I, was <laughs> <laughs> I was training up in Manchester. I was um, 
I was up at six, half six, go go for a five to ten mile run every morning, going to the gym for eleven o'clock and then train in the evening. So three or four times a day I was training and stuff. So do you have any gym or uh, supplement, obviously, sponsors that obviously will that I, can push you on, that can help you? I don't actually take supplements. I, I get all my, all Just what natural. I need pr through food. A lot of lot of pros uh, having uh, all different sorts of things, but... Um, I'm just the old fashioned way, just you eat well and you get your all your right uh, nutrition through food. So. Okay, uh, well, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. that's, that's obviously a great way to, to look at it there. Um, you mentioned that when you were 10 years old, you um, got into boxing. So what gave you the, the energy, gave you the passion to go into boxing? I had too much energy, that was <laughs> my problem. I, I was uh, always a little tear away in my, um, my council estate. Um, used to get into trouble with uh, a lot of the older lads. Won't mention no names, but uh, <laughs> they know who they are. And uh, um, do you feel now though you've you've turned you've turned a corner? Yeah, hundred percent. Like um, people will tell you stories about me as a kid, and uh, I've I've really changed my life around, and I'm, and I'm proud of that. So um, well, I think I think that does deserve yeah. a round of applause there. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll see you in a moment. We're going to be playing a game. Uh, if you lose and go to hell, you got to promise not to hit me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not a problem. I don't think you security are standing by, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be uh, the floor manager that'll be um, trying to step in. Yeah. <laughs> She's looking to be very. Uh, <laughs> like, no, that's yeah. not going to happen. Um, so the next six months for you, uh, will there be any fights? Is there any fights planned, or will it be just training? I was supposed to be fighting in April and then June, but it's looking like July now. So I put on a bit of timber. So. I had that four weeks out, so uh, of <laughs> retirement, I was enjoying myself and time to get back to work now. So right, Michael, it, it was honestly it was great talking to you. But as you now know, it is time to play the game. Yeah. So what it comes down to is basically what the producer got in store for you. So we're going to watch the VT and see what you're going to be playing. What's in the box? In front of the contestants are three boxes, each containing a gory substance. All you have to do is guess what each box contains. If you win, you're going to heaven. If you fail, hell awaits. Let's play. What's in the box? Yeah. You've kind of drawn the short short so yeah. far. Let's just sit there and just watch the TV. Now you've yeah. got to put your hands in stuff right. and try and guess what it is, okay? Um, you can explain to the audience, to the people at home, what you think's in the box, and then when you're ready to give us your final answer, just let us know. All right, so we're going to reveal to the people at home and in the audience what's in the first box. Okay, right, whenever you're ready, put your hands in and just explain to us how it feels. Just have a little feel around in there. That's how you don't look impressed. <laughs> <laughs> What does it feel like? I don't know, I've been stitched right up, I know that. <laughs> uh, you may need one of these to uh, wipe your hands with off. It's like coleslaw, I think. Is it coleslaw? Oh, yeah. Is it like coleslaw, that. guys? Yeah. yeah, well done. That's it, do you want to, um, I'll let you, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, right, okay, remember, yeah. <laughs> remember that's just the first box. Oh, so. right. <laughs> the rule of TV is that it gets worse as yeah. it goes along. Oh, geez. You ready for the second one? Yeah. It's not like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti. Spaghetti. Yeah. Is he right in saying spaghetti? Oh, jeez. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the third and final one. Right, okay, I've been told this one moves. Oh, God. So be careful, oh, no. okay? Oh, you kidding me? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, I can't imagine it. Oh, you gonna pass? Nah, nah. You gonna go for it? Can't be impressed with me. I've been told that it, it does bite. It, it, bite. <laughs> it looked quite angry, actually. You put your hand in it. Oh, just be careful. Just wait for that snap. What, what's our thought? What's our thought, bro? Oh, You're going towards its head. Know. You're going towards its head. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think it is? It looks very concentrated. It's like a tortoise, isn't it? No. Tortoise? A tortoise. Oh. Is it a tortoise? No. no. Okay. To be honest, it didn't actually have a head. It was a boxing glove. Oh. <laughs> 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 right, okay. So. 
the, the, the rule of the game was, did that one get your hands messy as well? Or? Nah, <laughs> the rule of the game, you had to get two out of the three, but I've just been told you needed to have said spaghetti in sauce for this one. Oh, yeah. So you've only got one. <laughs> that is I think that's enough for the touch of Phillies for now, Michael, but can you guess where you're going? Yeah, going to hell, yeah. You are, of course, going to hell. Make your way over. See Sergeant Sutton over there. Yeah. Saying you like that deserves at least 50 push ups. What are we saying? 50? 100? 200? We'll go with 50. 50 push ups, go! One, two, three, four, five. And Michael, it doesn't stop there. We're going to have to ask you to take your shoes and socks off and put your feet into the <laughs> lovely <laughs> pool of... I have no idea what's in there. <laughs> but while you're doing that, we're going to check in with Heaven. How are we doing, Minnie? Good. Are I you happy that wasn't I, you? I think we should switch. You think you should switch? Yeah, because my task wasn't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's done his time. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You're in Heaven. Relax. <coughs> also, like, she got knots. You're getting them through. <laughs> She quite relaxed, thing, yeah. yeah. Is your orange juice all all right? It's your feet up? very good. Enjoying yeah. yourself? Good. Michael, like here we training. go. That's it, straight <laughs> in. <laughs> right, put your feet straight in. Oh. Oh. Mix them all around. Oh. What does it feel like? Can yeah. you guess what it is? Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> is it a boxing glove? Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> right, OK, we'll catch up with them a little bit later and see how they're getting on. Now for our third and final guest for this evening. Some of you may recognise him as Jack from the hit BBC show, uh, Bad Education, and he's here with us tonight. Um, I must say that when the uh, producers told me that he was coming on the show, I was thrilled. <laughs> well, I'm a huge fan of Bad Education. Yeah. Um, obviously, you was on the, of the series of that, and I'm pretty sure myself and the audience have all seen it, have all seen the movie, and he's literally always in stitches. Well, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, we, we worked hard on it, and uh, we had no idea it was going to turn out to what it did. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, when you started, um, how did it all come around? So, like, how did you first of all apply? Did you apply? Did you? Age no, you? no. I, I started out as an athlete when I was younger. I was thrown into sport uh, by my parents because my parents are actors and actresses, and they said to me, you know, we don't want you to go into the industry because it's it's really fickle and there's lots of you yeah. know it's the ups and downs, and so they didn't want me to go into it. So I went into sport and um, I made to the Paralympics 2012, and then uh, Did that, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I didn't, I didn't win a medal or anything, but I had good fun um, racing and, and competing. And from that, it led to getting an agent. And then um, it just so happened when I was doing the, doing the sport and then went off to do the World Championships, Jack Whitehall was looking for a, a member to play the play Rem Dog in the show. And um, like appearance-wise, I just sort of fit the category that he wanted and went from there, I got the part. Well, I, I think you suit the part fantastic. <laughs> um, but filming Bad Education, how, how was that for you? Obviously, was it stressful? Was it enjoyable? Obviously, working with Jack Whitehall, Matthew Horn, they're, they're such, like, such funny actors. Yeah, no, it was good fun to film. There was lots of ups and downs with the show, and obviously, it, it being comedy, you know, you're forcing comedy out, and sometimes you're doing night shoots, it's two in the morning, you don't want to be doing comedy at two in the morning, so as soon as you got, everyone says, you know, oh, when you're off set, is it just as funny? You know, when you're hanging about in the green room or whatever, and it's not. No. Like, because you're doing comedy on stage, you don't want to talk when you're off. You, yeah, you look, yeah. you're just moody when you're off set, <laughs> and you go on set, and they're like, right, be funny, you know. It's so uh, yeah, and it was good fun, but uh, sometimes it just sort of some of the days just dragged on. Just dragged on, yeah, really yeah, long. yeah. But it's good. What was your favourite part of it all? Um, do you know what? Probably one of the most fun times I had on the show didn't actually make the show. They cut it, and we oh. spent a day filming it, and it didn't work. But we got a mini me in from Jackass. And uh, there was a scene where I had to jump off of a roof into a skip and Jack was going to catch me the last minute and he was going to be the saviour and, you know, the disabled kid was going to jump off the roof. And that was kind of a like really un-PC gag that was going on there. And we filmed the whole thing and from the back, obviously I was no way I was going to jump off a bloody roof. So we got, we got, I don't know if it's an insult or a, to catch you. Like, so that was never going to happen, but I don't know if it was an insult or a compliment, but they got mini me and it's my double. And... Uh, <laughs> Pretty sure it's an insult. And um, from behind, he had the hood up, and he, he jumped off the roof and front flipped into the skip. And that was just, and I, I just sat on a table, and they looked up at me as if I was yeah, like yeah. on the roof. 
that was that was a lot of fun doing that. Um, so working with the likes of Jack Whitehall, uh, Matthew Horn, yeah. and comedy legend, obviously Harry Enfield, yeah, in, during yeah. some of the series, yeah. does that help you as, a, as an actor? Um, does that help you through <laughs> the process? Or I mean, what were they like as well to work with? Yeah, they're all lovely people. Um, me and Jack, we got on really well, and he's one of those guys. You know, me and Jack, we hang out. You know, outside of filming, we'll, we'll go watch uh, some football together. We'll go hang out when I'm in the country. Um, we'll, he'll take me to like you know some cool place that he knows, and then we'll hang out. But um, it, yeah, it did help me out, you know, because working with Jack led me into, ironically, stand-up comedy. And um, that, that was just something I sort of took on from hanging out with him for so long, you know, was doing because this, that's, that's yeah. what he does, yeah. you know, so prominently. Um, and But comedy-wise, uh, I sort of branched out from comedy over the last two years into other genres. So. <laughs> We're going to look at the final um, VT for this evening sure. and see what we're going to be doing. Okay. Read out the rhyme. This game involves a tongue twister and a mouthpiece. The presenter must guess what the contestant is trying to say with a plastic object in their mouth. But is it as simple as it sounds? Let's play. Right, okay. So, we know what we're going to be doing. I've never played this sober. Never played this role. <laughs> no, sober. So I've never played sober. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that's water? <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, so on your cue cards, you've got um, some riddles. Yeah. Uh, riddles? Tongue twisters, I think the word is. Yeah, tongue twisters. Um, and um, I'm going to have to try and guess what they are. Right. You've got two on now, I believe, yeah. and you have to make up a third by yourself. Oh, you're having a joke. <laughs> right, okay. um, I've got to guess two of the three <laughs> for you to join Minnie. If I only get one of the three or none, you'll be joining Michael. Are you confident? Oh, so my aim is for you to actually yeah, arrive. Yeah. Okay, not screw you over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which way round does it go? Um, does honestly, it not quite sure. Um, that I think that goes underneath. Obviously, smacky. That's it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's it. Look yeah. directly into the camera. I will love you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Whenever you're ready, you say the first. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Heater like her. Hit a hacker, hit a hacker, hit a hackers. I'm going to go for Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> yes, yes, we've, got, we've got to get one more, but we're going to do all three still. Jeez. Three, two, three, I'll give three. So let's do the second one. Okay. Uh, if two witches are watching two watches, Rich, 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 rich. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it's the look afterwards. <laughs> um, I have to say, your um, and actually, um, your um, thing of the words is is brilliant. So I'm really, say, if two <laughs> witches were watching two watches, yeah. which which would watch which watch? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now. <laughs> This I don't is, know anymore. This is where it, is it hurting? No, I don't know anymore. Oh, okay, this is where it gets interesting though, because mm. if you don't know anymore, here we go. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a good look for you, to be fair. I, I like, if I like it. If they ever bring bad ed education back, you should. I'm go taking back. a selfie. <laughs> Instagram. Ah, uh, Jesus. Uh, I don't know anymore. Uh, or just say a sentence of anything. A sentence? Yeah, anything? but some, okay. th something obviously that I'm okay. not going to guess into. Uh, I don't shake my ass like sushi on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what I said. <laughs> what was that word? <laughs> Just say it one time. Just say it again. I don't shake my ass like sushi on the beach. I once broke my, I want to say arm, because yeah. the other word would be quite rude. <laughs> <laughs> playing, yeah. and I don't know how you'd break it to be fair, playing, um, say the last bit again. Frisbee on the beach. Frisbee on the beach. Yeah. Brilliant, there we go. Well, I think you would agree, the audience would agree, and the people at home would agree that game was quite a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how you got on. What do we think? Heaven or hell? Heaven. We're going for heaven. Okay, how good will a massage feel right now? Great, yeah. great. Really you can massage good. your mouth back into place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> my jaw's out of line. <laughs> It'll get rid of all the tension to find out whether you're going to heaven or hell. But I can confirm you are going to heaven. Wait. So come and join me. Let's go. How are we getting on over here, Michael? Yeah, yeah, just feeling absolutely <laughs> hard done by here. Like. Sergeant, how's he been? He got what he deserved. He got what he deserved. <laughs> um, could this be part of your training regime for yeah, the next yeah. fight? Nice foot massage. Yeah. It is. 
it's a two point to you. Yeah. No, it's a boxy glove. Sure, you got me with that one. Have you enjoyed yourself? No, no, it's been good. Fantastic. Nah, I'm all good. Jack, <laughs> you've just been offered some grapes. <laughs> <laughs> you've just got into heaven. Yeah. How, how does it feel? Is it how you imagine Oh, I remember my dad telling me once when I was younger that I'm definitely going to hell. And the reason he said that was because there's always a stairway to heaven, but he never mentioned anything about hell. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, thanks, Dad. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Minnie, you've been here since the beginning of the show. Has it been? must have been so enjoyable. Yeah, was the massage enough. good? It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, you're about to get your massage now. Yeah. Orange juice sort of okay? Perfect. Do you yeah. got bits in, is it not? No. No? Do you like it like that? Do you like it smooth? Smooth's better than bits, better yeah. Than bits, yeah. You might have to massage his face back into place. Mm. <laughs> I just oh, want to yeah. thank you all for being yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want to thank you all for being the guinea pigs for our first ever show. I think it's been a success. Do you agree? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No doubt I'll be getting a telling off by the production team after the credits run. <laughs> Did you all enjoy taking part? Yeah, yeah brilliant, yeah, great. Fantastic. Yeah, you seem yeah. so, yes. No, no, it's it's well. it <laughs> Our show is nearly coming to an end. I know, we all cried together. But before, I would like you to listen to something. No, don't worry, it's not a drowning cat or me singing, although I have you all know I have a beautiful voice. <laughs> uh, but it's not as great as tonight's performer. We have a very special performance from the University of Bethesda's very own musician, Sam Devendas, who will be performing his own remix to The Jam. Thank you all for watching at home. Whether you're sitting on the sofa or on the toilet seat, you still had a seat. Take it away, Sam. <laughs> Five mad men in a bando, all black guys strapped like Rambo. Whipping the blanco, whipping the blanco, so they can ride in the Lambo. They don't like coconut, but they be out for the bouncy, call them Django. Like they took mama's mama out for a drive, they dropping no grams though. Brothers ain't got no license, but they be whipping it in that Pyrex. They be mixing it, mixing it, mixing it, but they can't afford to buy decks. I stay open, cause of the police, they be like, who to spy next? Too many Bitcoin breakers, put it as one in the diners, yeah. Time is money, spend it wisely cause it's priceless So I might just grip the mic and ignite it with lighter fluids I'm the best in the game and I prove it Just give me the chance and I'll do it My girl be my side, money my man cause I keep it on my mind like Jewish, yeah You can't blame God for the mistakes that man makes He just got the man up, fix it like band-aids I don't trust you if you're talking sweet like pancakes I don't trust you if you're talking sweet like pancakes